things synced up. Let's. Uh, so how do you want to start this? You mean how, are we recording now? Are we live? Is this like good to go? Well, we can start whenever. Like technically, we're synced up. Um, All right. Whatever. This is just. <laughs> you know, the song right. is like we're just gonna include everything so far. <laughs> Be really awkward about. It. Not even care. Hi. Yeah. Right. This is uh. This is a game. This is Final Fantasy VI. Yeah. So. All right. Just to give an idea. Oh. Just a when, 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 one sec. Warning in advance. If you're one of those people who like doesn't like the sound of eating, I'm not stopping to eat these nachos for you. <laughs> I'm gonna continue to eat my nachos, and if you hear it, too bad. Continue. All right. So just a little bit of background on this game. Uh, if you played the original, you might be looking like low data from every Microsoft One. Okay, this is the PlayStation re-release um, and the Anthology Two Pack. Um, I played this game when it came out in '92. I think it came out '92 or '90. No, it came out in '93. Final Fantasy V was released in '92. No, this, this game's older than. I am. Yeah. No matter what, this game's <laughs> older than me. So, I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, and this this version actually kept a lot of the bugs and little weird glitches from the original. On purpose? Or, like, they just didn't they, give no, a fuck? No, they, they didn't give a fuck. They just straight up ported the game, the SNES version. Alright. Um, which means... I won't point all of them out. I'll point them out if I have the time and I see some of them. Um, now, we do have a few things you can actually look right now. Um, it does give you some bonus content. Uh, if you have a save that's like post-game or further along, um, you can load it and it'll... Oh, see? Can't find System 5. Why? There is not. Okay, so what happens with the bonuses? It's... Well... You can see without loading, and uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Like, there's, uh, for the secret, it actually gives you a bestiary. Um, and this is actually a pretty big one. I won't show all the things, but uh, it's actually pretty comprehensive. It's like, for the first third, the first act, basically, like, the first third of the game, um, it gives you a full bestiary. Of entire enemy stats, including bosses, their drops, and ideas on how to kill them. Wow. And it was actually kind of Not amazing. even like modern games have been series that good these days. Yeah, well, you know, just to give an idea, like, it divides it by area, and like, you know, you have your general move. Oh, wow, you have all their stats. The amount of experience and gold they drop? Yeah. And you no, know, a little bit of flavor text. I don't know. It tends out that these guys probably crit often enough. So yeah, like you know, and if you knew what the little symbols were, you'll notice that that's the poison symbol. Um, others I think are like items. Uh, I actually can't remember what they all are. I, it's annoying because my my I actually do have a save somewhere. It's in a memory card probably stored off in a box uh, that has like the full save but and then you have the studio which has an art gallery uh, this is of the FMV I mean if you're gonna port a SNES game onto a disc yeah, like 10 times the size you is... better put some bonus content in yeah but like this is actually pretty cool uh Like, this is uh, a storyboard for the opening intro. Nice. Like, it's actually some really cool bonuses that this gives you. Man, Japanese game companies put a lot of detail on their storyboards. Yeah. Have you ever seen, like, a Cartoon Network storyboard? Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, so shittily drawn. It's basically stick figures. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, this is a, a port, but you'll notice that... Uh, for all the ports he did, uh, which was Final Fantasy 1, 2, uh, 4, 5, and 6, they ported all those games over to PlayStation. Uh, and for all of them, they actually gave uh, FMVs. Um, now, we skipped that. We just went straight up to the intro. 
but you'll notice that you know, this is and it's kind of choppy I know I think that's just because my PlayStation is shit um, rather than the actual recording actually uh, on a console this time yeah <laughs> yeah yeah like this is you know, I'm I was trying out something new uh, when I'm recording this it's kind of weird uh, I won't go into details but it involves using one piece of hardware a second a software that has nothing to do with that and then a second piece of software um, it's kind of stupid uh, but like this is post Final Fantasy 7 like once they found out Final Fantasy 7 was actually a big deal they decided to do the re-releases so you'll notice like this is all FF7 uh, FMVs like Squaresoft was like man we can do a thing with this got really obsessed with videos for a while yeah uh, that's Terra uh, she's pretty much one of the main characters. Well, there's this is a weird game. There's no prop main character proper. It's really about the group. Terra Locke. Yeah, the only people I remember. From yeah, um, like the first ago. guy that we saw was Edgar, and that was Sabin. Um, these two moogs that are actually next to her are Biggs and Wedge. They're the most common fa named Final Fantasy moogs. I think I've uh, ever seen. Sid is more common. Sid is not a move. I guess. Like, he's like a big actual proper character. But like, if you're gonna be controlling two moves, yeah, they're probably gonna be bigs and wedge. Now this is us going to a little bit of the background of what's going on. And that's Kefka Il Palazzo. Oh, Kefka. Is probably like the most popular Final Fantasy villain. By people who know good villains, he's a, he's probably one of the most popular ones. For everyone else, it's Sephiroth. Was this like all the Final Fantasy games have included like some level of steampunk technology? Yeah, like well, for the most part, it's just airships. But this is uh, Final Fantasy One had the the warbots. True. Yeah. This is more magic punk than proper steampunk. Because those are entirely powered by magic. Uh, I thought the plot was that like magic was missing. I thought that was like no. Magic well, universe. yes and no, kind of. Uh, the thing is, magic is missing. Uh, but the the empire has found it. Um, so they're really pushing magic for. You know, they're pushing magic for Summer Slime, basically. No. They want magic to be the big thing. Um, so, yeah, if I discovered magic, I think I'd push it in industry. I'd be like, okay, so I can make all the money and be 10,000 years ahead of my competitors. Yeah. Or I could choose the party tricks. Yeah. Um, the memo is actually for quick saves. Believe it or not. <laughs> huh. It allows you to quick save. Um, I believe... Yeah. Uh, so we're going to start a new game. Um, uh, Can you quick save like during battle? No. Oh. I don't think so. But you don't need to be at a save point proper to quick save. Yeah. Um, the quick save just cancels, of course, once you restart your system. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, this is actually what you would get in the normal uh, Super Nintendo version. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, Alex does not have headphones, so he's no, going to miss out. Lazy. It's my own fault. Yeah, he's going to miss out on the very beautiful music. I have I know Final Fantasy music, and by extension, the Square's music in general is always fantastic. But I'm really spoiled on Bravely Default music now, so everything else is still a step down. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna push that game until I die. <laughs> yeah, I need my tax return so I can order a DS capture card. Yeah, so <laughs> I can get Bravely Default. Yeah, screen chaps. Someday I should let you go through the conversations in Ravely Default. There's like a, a play menu where you can go in and you can play through every conversation you've ever seen in the game. <laughs> Some of them are just perfect. Ring a bell is like the the square character of choice for me. Yeah. Uh, Alright. So this is 
like I was saying, this is uh, the, SN the SNES intro, basically. And this is that picking up from where uh, the CG intro uh, left off, where it stopped. Okay. Um, basically, it's, it's stopped with Terra, Biggs, and Wedge going off to Narsh. Uh, so there's a the town. Uh, I think actually in the original SNES, it was Vix and Wedge that they put in names just because they didn't want uh, Lucas to sue their arses. But I think at this point, it's like, you know, whatever. Yeah. Alright, so what's Terra's affiliation here? Terra is currently, uh, well, you'll see in a minute. <laughs> I don't know if these guys are talking exactly about that. Okay. So. <laughs> the slave crown on her head robs her of all conscious thoughts. That's so she's story. always been friendly to the Empire, is what you're saying? Uh, for, yeah. No. She's friendly in the sense that she is a puppet. So. Now, again, this, like, this is why I really hate Alex not having. Because be the, the beautiful music. Oh my god. You know what? I'm just going to pass no. it over. God. You have to listen to this. I'm sorry. Alright. Yes, it's Final Fantasy music, right? I know. It's beautiful, but like it's something I've never heard before. Yeah. It's so fitting for the tone. Like, they're trudging through the snow, going to Narj. And they're just going to destroy these people's way of life. <laughs> And it's so, like, cheery, like, we're on a grand adventure, guys. We're saving the world. No, it's not a cheery music. That's the thing. It's... I don't know. It's kind of adventurous. I, I wouldn't say that it's haunting or, like, sad. Like, this... It isn't. Yeah. It isn't, like, this, like, epic, we're gonna go wreck these kids' day music. <laughs> it isn't, like, a, this is a tragic thing happening. This is a, this is a start of a journey. Something's coming up. Yeah. Which is how every Final Fantasy game starts. Always that musical tone. Right off the bat. I just say, Square is the master of the craft when it comes to this. Yeah. They know just how to set the tone. Old Square. Old Square. Yeah. Like, some of the new stuff, kind of dicey. That's why kinda I like the Default so much, because they, like, got back to their pre-3D Final Fantasy yeah. roots. And we can see the mining town of Narsh up ahead. I see. Uh, the only thing I remember about this game is the first boss. Okay. The snail. Yeah. Yeah, the snail is kind of stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, spo spoiler alert, but god damn the snail. Yeah. And yeah, but that's that's where my memory of this game ends. Uh, <laughs> I remember also really, really the part where you use the Moogles to like protect Locke. Yeah. There's actually a little thing with the Moogles. I don't think I can do it the first time you see the Moogles. I'm going to see if I can. But there's a little... There's a little thing, actually. I'll see if I can do it. Alright. So, are there any other notable differences in the re-release? Or is there they're just like a straight-up port? With straight-up port, I think. Like, I don't think they added anything. Other than, like, the bonus content. Then balance it. Because usually Final Fantasy games need, like, a second, like, tuning pass to actually... Oh, no. This one is full of bugs at places. I see. Like, no, I don't they're... mean that. I mean just, like, balance in combat. Like... No. I, I guess old Final Fantasy wasn't that bad. No, uh, you can, there's, this one has a lot of bullshit you can do that is kind of, so... No, this one, no, this one doesn't have classes, this one they were just starting to do, like, each character was their own thing. Yeah, um, mm. the first one I think to really do that was Final Fantasy V, Let's see, so and many. this is building off that, because there are, I think, your main party, the permanent party members, there are 14 of them. What? Yeah. This game had 14? Yeah. Damn. Um, yeah, I'm fine with that, though. I don't, you know, I don't need, like, and, classes when there's 14 and characters. And temporary party members, I think it goes... If you include the temporary ones, I think it goes up to, like, almost 30. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And do they all stay relevant in the story? Like, all the main ones, at least? Oh, yes. Okay, so then I'm like, none of them really hates it, though. Um, well, there's a few of them that are kind of the case sit of the group. 
And even then, Kate Sid is more no, back, Kate... does stuff in the background. Yeah, but... no, Kate Sid's really important to the background story. But it's yeah. like, when you're going around having conversations and stuff, Yeah, it's like, where, where the fuck is Kate Sid? <laughs> yeah, well, there's two characters. Uh, they're entirely optional. They're kind of, they're sort of secret and hidden. Um, and, no, those guys, they literally do not do anything. Like, you get them, and they're like, oh, they're here. Um, and for the, I guess the second act is a lot more freeform how you do things. It's a lot less linear, the second act of the game. Well, the lot, like, it's a, I don't know if I can really say acts. Yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, you can break it up in second act, in three acts, I guess. Most, most stories could broken up into three acts. <laughs> Yeah, this is just a weird story. The weird, the the pacing. Like, you'll see when when I, when we get there. Yeah. Like, right now it's just random mook battles at the start, and it's like it's not even random. It's literally preset mook battles. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it has a weird storytelling. Like, um, oh, fuck, it's one of those things where I really want to say, yeah, but I don't. Don't want worry, to I'm it. all about weird stories, so I'm gonna get into this probably. Yeah. I mean, I always wanted to get into Final Fantasy, but it's like, I never had an excuse to. Yeah. There's always new games coming out. <laughs> yeah. I have Dark Souls to play. Hmm. That is a thing to play. We should try to record Dark Souls sometime. Once I've done you know, a few playthroughs and yeah. I'm halfway confident in Dark Souls 2. <laughs> Dark Souls 1, I can get like 50% of the way through without any trouble at all, barely dying. And then things go to shit. Things go to shit the first time I see Seat the Scales. <laughs> so, uh. Alright. Lobo and Guards. Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of the, the, the mookiest of the mooks. Um, there's really not much to say about this area except, you know. The snail boss that will yeah. come up in a bit. No, there's like, oh, there's a lot too early Final Fantasy games ever because you have yeah. to get into the game. They have to assume you're a new player. Yeah. Well, what they even do is they give you these overpowered max to start you off. And these last until the snail fight. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. I remember the snail fight. I remember it was easier hard or not. Um, think, like, is it? Is the snail fight is easy uh, if unless you're brain dead. Okay. Like it will literally tell you how to beat the snail. It's lightning, isn't it? Or like use an element. Um, it's don't use an element and don't use it when it's don't use lightning and don't uh, attack when it's in its shell. Alright, so it's a mechanical boss. I like that one. Starting yeah. the game off with a boss, it's like, yeah, these guys have mechanics. Yeah. Um, actually, since we are doing something, uh, this right now, and we've got these mechs, um, there's one, uh, there's a little, little thing about the mechs that's, that's kind of interesting. The mechs are considered a status. Really? Yep. Um, that's why we have Ma Magi Tech instead of this normal attack. Uh, and there's a bad guy. Uh, this is a mook you can fight later on. Um, that what he does is he swaps statuses with your party. So if this guy with a party member, and there's a few piece, there's a few characters that this does affect, um, including people who are with the max, and uh, one character will we get pretty early on. Um, and I'll explain that when we get him. But if, per se, we were fighting that en that enemy right now, uh, and he would use his ability that swaps, uh, that swaps. swaps status effects, I would actually not be able to use my uh, big robot attacks, and he would be shooting probably missiles at me and healing himself. Wow. So there's a character who actually keeps the mechs throughout the course of the game? Um, it's not that the character keeps the mechs. It's... The mech is just a status. Okay. Um, there's several things that have to do with that. Uh, just how it decides that, no, you can use mechs. 
Like, I still have the mech sprite. It's just... Yeah. Uh, the weird status effect that No, is. but I, I thought that the mechs were only for this part, and then they were gone. They are. They are only for this part. Uh... Then how do you get the status effect for them to take it, then? Or you can't. This is hypothetical. Well, no, no, no. The thing is, when you start the game, it just gives you the status effect of as mech. Oh, okay. Um, and it gives you the sprite of, like, Terra yeah. and the mech. Um, I actually think if I go here and rearrange my party, like now you have like Biggs and Wedge as the lead sprite. Come on. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Biggs and Wedge are much more important. Yes. Actually, right now they are because they're my handlers. I know, but it's not like they're going to be major characters. It's, they're... Well, they're your enemies right now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, these are, like, kind of nice guys. Like, they're, like, you know, they're just soldiers. Control uh, you with a slave crown. The slave crown, in my, in their defense, was put on me by uh, Kefka, who probably told these guys that my character is a raging sociopath. I know, but... That just murders everyone in her way. Don't slave crown them and make them do your dirty work. Oh, I'm not saying That's it's... That's, like, greasy warfare. That's... Terrible. Oh man, you all you're gonna see greasy warfare, man. You are going to see the greasiest of warfare. Ooh, if you think slave crowns by themselves are bad. How do you get worse than forcing your enemy to fight your war for you? Uh, it's not necessarily the war, but man, it's kinda greasy, these guys. <laughs> Ooh. Sorry, just very briefly eating an nacho. Yeah. Okay. And here's where it's in the shell. Yeah. Oh. Just gonna yeah. take time to heal, I guess. I could also use my. No, I'm gonna use my magic on them next time. So you're still able to use your magic as long as you're. Okay. okay, so they don't deserve no explanation. We're just getting right back into it. Yeah. Shit happened. Drive suck. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, we killed the Welk. Um, it was easy. <laughs> uh, for those of you who missed the latter end of that fight, uh, it is, don't shoot it when it's hiding. The end. I then got my slave crown off, and here I am. We had a nice conversation about how Square is a bunch of dicks for what they do with chests. Yep. Which is basically, if I come here later in the game, I will be able to get better gear. Yeah, so, completely unintuitive, telling you to ignore the chests. Mm -hmm. Also, they don't tell you how to run away immediately, as you hold down the shoulder buttons. Yeah, so, here we are. We're yeah. into it, we're into the flow of things. I have a laptop on me now, so if I run out of things to talk about, I can browse, and life yeah. is okay. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, got a lot of stuff done. Yeah, we didn't lose, lose too much, I guess. No, just me asking about weapons. Yeah. The reason I asked, by the way, uh, fuck Lost Odyssey. Well, three oh of the characters God. use swords, yeah. three of them use staves, and there's two of the characters. One of them uses guns, and one of them uses discuses. Yeah. So those two characters get no goddamn weapons credit everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this basically came about with us asking about the gear. Uh, which is not character specific, except for like a few pieces. Yeah. Um, it's all weapon groups. Uh, the reason we start talking is that early game you're really relying more on your gear since you're not going to be love power leveling. Uh, you really want to hold on until you start getting the espers. And we'll we'll wait till we get to those to discuss yeah. that because let's let's face it, we're, yeah. we're really bad spoilers here. Yeah. So Kafka. Blah, 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 slave crown, sweet little magic user. He's obsessed. He's yeah. Kefka. Well, Terra is the first natural magic user that they find in a while. Okay. Like, uh, you will find another magic user uh, pretty early on, um, but she is artificial. Uh, they basically pumped her full of Esper. <laughs> but Terra is just naturally Espers. Yep. She's naturally magic capable. Um. That's why you see her here with the slave crown, 
uh, murdering everyone because he don't care. He's a she's a mind slave. Wee hee hee. That's not like the most terrifying laugh I've ever seen in the entire. Yeah. Life. He's so yeah. He's so Kafka. happy about it though. He's he's Kafka about it. Yeah. What's the Final Fantasy fighting game? Is that Final Fantasy fighting game? Yeah. Dissidia? Dissidia, yeah. Kafka's in that, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Don't know why I haven't that came played. Just, yeah. I, I haven't played it. Yeah, I know. It's it's a game I've always meant to play. But... The fact that another game, uh, Square made another fighter for the PlayStation. I think it's called Einhander. Okay. Um, and you get to play as Cloud as one of the secret characters. Cloud Square like went a little kick the role PlayStation era after seven of putting Cloud in every goddamn game. <laughs> yep. He was in Tactics. He was kind of a shitty optional character until you unlocked his last move. In Even which case, then. He wrecked shit. Oh, come Even on. Then. The Omnislash Slash wrecked everything. Like, yes, Orlando was still stronger just by virtue of being Orlando. Well, but... as I said, like, I tend to just put all my characters, like, like ninjas with super good weapons, and, like, put them knights, give them two, wheel two things, and you tend to, by the time Cloud had loaded up his thing, you dogpiled people to death. Like, you just use dogpile tactics at that point. <laughs> tactics, tactics. Yes, very good, yeah. Mark. You made it. Yeah, I made it. Jo- I made it funny. <laughs> but yeah, and now we meet uh, the treasure hunter. Um, something actually uh, because of Skip. Um, basically, this old guy. Uh, once you beat uh, Snail Face. Um, Tara and the two uh, Biggs and Wedge, they kind of get their shit kicked by Tritorch, who is basically a phoenix stuck in ice. Um, they get their shit kicked, and Tara survives. This old dude here, uh, he ends up being the one who finds her, removes the slave crown, then Tara uh, goes out to the back door, so that she doesn't get caught by the guards who are looking for their three mechs that kind of just blipped off the radar and lost so, contact. There's a lot of story stuff going on in the background now. Uh, yeah. Basically, Locke is kind of an awesome dude. He doesn't steal things. He finds things in people's houses and pockets. He's a treasure hunter. Yeah. Not a thief. Uh, a treasure hunter. And he's worried about his town being taken over by the Empire. Probably, you know, hurt the trade. Yeah. So now he's giving you a hand. Yeah. And he finds an unconscious girl. Mm-hmm. So this is one of the first sequences we get of this. There's several of these in the game. Um, basically what happens is we'll be getting uh, some help in a bit. Yeah. So here's what's up. These guards are going to walk down the hallway in a pattern. And we're able to establish guards to do fights so that they don't get to Locke or Terra. Yeah. Uh, no, you can get to Locke. You can fight as Locke. Okay, yeah. You kind of do one because he can steal things. Yeah, but the, the, once you get Mog, he's just so OP. Yeah. For these parts. And he's just cleans oh, up. Oh, yeah. He just cleans up. Koopo. Any more information? Nope. I know how this plays. So you get these segments later on in the game, too? Yep. Do, do, do they do it like, with your party members? Like, instead of with yes. Oh, that's cool. So like once you get like a good, a good little All cast right. of party members going. So, I'm just going to go and put Locke at the front so I know which party is his. Uh, and... Um, I don't know if this has been saved or not. Uh, because I talked about this earlier. Is this Smog party? Yes. Let's see. Yes, you can! Ha 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 ha! Yeah, um, you'll notice that the Mithril Pike has a spell power of 60. That's way better than anyone's gear. Same with the shield. Oh my. You can't get these yeah. in our, like early game. So you know what? You just grab them. Square always has that too, where like you don't realize a party member is temporary until they run away with all your shit. And you put Mog in the back row. Fucking Gafgarian, man. That way he doesn't get a lot of damage, and you can still use your dances because those wreck shit. The 
first time I played Tactics, though. Friggin' Gaff Garion. I gave him all my best gear. All yeah. of it. <laughs> oh. Leaves the team. I'm like, oh, okay. Don't get back when I kill him. Less okay. So. Yeah, did you see that? He took zero damage. Mog is just kind of OP even without any gear. Like, he doesn't need that shit. He's Mog. One of them had like a flail. Yeah! Uh, and oh, I've mastered a new dance. It's called the Wreck Shit. A, a dance? Yep. The Mog movie. is a. Uh, how. What do they call him? A slam dancer? Okay. Um. Basically, I don't know if that's the actual term used in the Japanese game, the Japanese version. I really don't. Um, but basically what you do is you use dance. Uh, and he basically met, m does things with the, with the environment um, that are overpowered because he'll murder his, some things. Wait, so do you like get Mog as a party member again later? You do. Ah. Uh, okay. And, uh, depending on which one you use, for example, if you're using Desk Requiem in a cave, it has a better chance of going off. Uh, because there's, like, rock above your head, etc. Yeah. Uh, and you can use it, for example, in the fields, uh, but you're probably not going to do it. It can occasionally, and at that point it changes, uh, the background to, um, what it is, for example. No, uh, you should probably get one of the other parodies, because you're getting pretty close. Two of them. I'm just gonna get the other one block off. Uh, right now, Caven is himself, but he actually has one uh, that instant kills most enemies in these areas. Uh, I forget what it's called. It just creates a vortex underneath them, and it just sucks them in. Wow. Yeah. That's a dance? Yep. The Moogles know how to shake their moves. Oh, yeah. Um, the field one is pretty cool, also. Uh, like, one of them heals, I think, the whole party, and the other one damages all the enemies. The dance are pretty boss, all, when all said and done. Mog party getting all the fights. Uh, Mog is this high enough level that the EXP here doesn't really matter for him. Yeah. Oops. Like, he's taking five damage in the back row completely naked. Can you take that dude's flail too? No. Oh. These guys you can't. Uh, the only reason you can do that with Mog is, is because... Yeah. Later. So. Okay. It's kind of cool how they just put one random Moogle in there who is somehow more important than the rest. Yeah. There's not a lot of Moogle, like, full party members in Pop Fantasy games. No, there isn't. Um, in, like, the Advanced series. Yeah. Uh, Tactics Advance, you get some of them, but... Beyond that, nope. It's really weird to me, because there's more robot cats riding things than Moogle party mm -hmm. members in the game. Technically, there were two Kate sets. True. Technically, there were. Alright. And now this guy is going to kill... This one here. And congratulations, you've won. No, you're still the boss. Oh, fair little bit. Slash, I don't remember much about this game at all. Yeah. Which I want to get uh, lock in that fight. For stealing purposes? Yep. I don't care what these if these guys live or die. You don't care about your mookles? Nope. Fuck you, Curran. But what about Kamog? Kamog's a bro. He's chill as hell. Yeah. I bet he knows all the dances. He could be the slam master. He can shut up and jam and listen to the slam. 
however that song goes. Yeah, no, I have no clue what Space Jam song goes either. Oh, is boss fight done? Yep. Uh, I'm just gonna go check my inventory. Put me in the back. And... I'm just gonna heal you. Alright. Um, like, the... The flail and the uh the hoopy thing. Yeah. Um those are actually things that Locke can use later on. Who can use the uh, weapon you just got took from Mog? Can either Locke or Terry use nope. it or nope? Nope, next party member can. Cool. Would Mog have taken those items back with him when he came back to the party? No, if uh, he didn't take them yeah. originally? Will he have them when he rejoins your party now? No, actually. Okay, so it's like his, his, his default item set for when he joins the party yep. in the game. Okay. It, it's weird, like, those things happen because, like, the shortcuts they take in coding these games. Where, like, they would just have the character save file for each individual character. So they would just use that same data for the original instance of the character appearing. Instead of some games these days would have created a whole other instance of that character. Yeah. Fuck's sakes. Alright, I need to have to fight him. Oh, I might yeah, have to... You're kind of loose in the fight. Yep. No, he was uh, charging, which means he deals crits. So what happens if you die here? Uh, I believe all that happens is I go back at the start. And then I try to... Uh, doesn't maybe Locke just like get unconscious and then like Mog can come walk Yeah, again? that's it. Like... Okay, then why don't you just keep stealing and then Mog can clean up because he's Mog. Because, like, would it be worth it for what you get from the marshal? I think so. I don't know. Alright. Let's check something. Let's see. I'm asking you so if it... Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, what? Are they all in concert? I think so. You're all dead. Yeah. I thought there was a way to heal up from here. Potions? Yeah, well, the actual way to heal up. Wait, so you go to him, he just waits there for you? Yep. Easy enough. Time for the mog cleanup, I guess. More than twice the health of anyone else. I don't know, I guess bottom noodle. Coupon. Hmm. So, does the marshal keep his damage from your last attempt, or is he full health? I think he's full health. Yeah, snare! This is the one. Did that just kill the boss? Killed him. Mog, what the fuck? Yeah, told you. Some of the dancers are kind of broke. We found 490 Yeah. 